Hi, I'm Daphne Good, and isn't this just the best quintessential West Coast scene? We're here in Cowichan Bay. Welcome to Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, people open up when Dan Kahn speaks to them. A fascinating glimpse at Gulf Island's children's unique way of life and learning about Cowichan Bay from the water. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. They say to start a new business, you need to look for an opportunity. So that's what Tim Doyle did. He started up Grey Lag Tours here in Cowichan Bay, an opportunity to take tourists and locals on a scenic tour of this beautiful area. Then it quickly morphed into a shuttle service to Genoa Bay. Come on board Grey Lag Tours with us. There are some waterfowl, there's some beautiful resident mute swans, but they're usually too far away to get a close look up at. Uh, but there are two rather spectacular uh, things we can see in the bay during the tour. Uh, the seals, the harbor seals, um, when we're, we'll often see them swimming in the water with their heads poking out. But other times they'll be up on the log booms uh, sunning themselves and they can be uh, quite delightful to, to, to watch and the antics and there's the little babies are around now so they're cute as, cute as can be. Uh, but the other one that I really love are the osprey eagles. They're, there's two mating pair uh, in the bay and one of them has chosen the top of a dolphin that they tie the log booms to as their nest site and uh, we're able to get up close and usually we get a good scolding from mum and the little ones are poking their head up and seeing what's going on and uh, they're just such beautiful, beautiful birds that it's always cameras out and everybody's clicking like crazy because they love to, love to record it on film. And just like most good boaters, you're very respectful of uh, making sure the engine is down when you're going close to the osprey nest. Yeah, I, I go slow um, and I keep uh, my distance because I don't want to in any way jeopardize the, uh, the, 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 the chicks that are being raised. And I see a lot of floats in this area too, Tim. Yeah, I've been told by a local expert that Cowichan Bay is unique on the coast of British Columbia. It's the only area where recreational crabbing is allowed, but commercial crabbing is not allowed. As a result, there's lots and lots of beautiful Dungeness crab. I'm told by this same expert that it's not difficult to catch your limit every day of four crab. And on the market, you know, at the supermarket, you'd be paying 80 to to $100 for that much crab. And you can do that 365 days of the year in Couch and Bay. It's a highly sustainable fishery. And you have not been affected by the crab closures in other parts, it sounds like. No, uh, fortunately crab aren't affected by red tide and things like that. One of the heartbreaks in Couch and Bay is that since 1976, we've not been allowed to harvest the clams, which there are many, many of. But because of pollution, we've been unable to, uh, to harvest them. There is a plan in place by the Cowichan Estuary Board to put together a cleanup program, and they hope to have harvestable clams again by 2020. What a great day that'll be. Now, we're looking out at Aboriginal land mostly here on Mount Zuhalem and, and this vicinity. Yeah, and uh, thankfully, most of it has remained completely undeveloped and so we get that beautiful wilderness setting and uh, it, it gives one a sense of separation from, from the, the hustle and bustle of the city to be able to come out here and just see all these beautiful uh, wilderness in its natural setting. It's, it's really quite lovely. But we do make a point of not landing on the land without getting permission from the First Nations Band as a sign of respect. I'm sure there are plenty of locals that would love to take the trip to Genoa Bay and the other tour which goes around Cowichan Bay. Can you just break them down for us? How long do they take and when are you traveling in the summertime, Tim? Okay, well, uh, I've only been running for about a month, so everything is very much <laughs> figured out as I go. I offered two services. Uh, initially, when I uh, started the business, I was thinking only about being, offering tours 
to visitors to the bay uh, one hour uh, and we would go and have a look at the estuary and the wildlife that's there and then come into Genoa Bay and have a little look around at this beautiful little spot. And so when I came about a month ago to check out Genoa Bay, I was greeted with such enthusiasm by the marina owners and the restaurant owners here, the Genoa Bay Cafe, that I realized that there was this need for a shuttle service between Cowichan Bay and Genoa Bay. The drive from Cowichan Bay to Genoa Bay, I've been told, can take up to 45 minutes. And it's rather tedious. If you've done it more than once, <laughs> it's just a trial you get through. And apparently the, uh, the owners of Genoa Bay Cafe were telling me many of their customers complained about that. They loved the restaurant, hated the drive. And so I sort of fell into their plans perfectly by offering my little boat as a shuttle and uh, so far this month, in the month of July, uh, so three weeks, I've ferried over about 130 people. Oh, wow. And so that shows that, you know, the, the, the demand was just sitting there waiting to be met. It's also an advantage for boat owners who don't want to cross in choppy waters in a small boat or take a larger boat over. Well, you're right. Uh, large boats can be a bit of a nuisance to get ready and, and, and dock and undock and do all that other stuff. Uh, and during the day, uh, in the summer, we get um, these inflow winds that develop. As the valley land warms up, it rises and the cool sea air is pulled in underneath it and it can get you know 15 to 20 knots of wind out there and that's a little too much for most of the dinghies that are out there at least well they can do it but it's not very comfortable uh, so a lot of people have been uh, using me because I'm a, a bit more dignified way of crossing the bay the other great thing that's developed is the local visiting yachtsmen that come to Genoa Bay often from the United States as well as from the mainland they um, they like to be able to access Couch and Bay to do shopping at at um, True Grain Breads, Hillary's Cheese, go to the liquor store, the pub, the, the other restaurants that are there, visit the Maritime Museum, visit the artists' shops. Uh, but they had either to take their big boat over or cross that, you know, bumpy bay in their little dinghy. So now I have two-way traffic. I have the people from the valley coming over here often usually for lunch or dinner and then I have the visiting Osman going over to the to the uh, village uh, in order to do a little bit of shopping for a few hours. Speaking of boats we're going over to the Salt Spring Island and Gulf Islands area because a lot of kids come this fall will be hopping on their bicycles maybe taking the bus or walking to school but in the Gulf Islands it's totally different as the kids head down to the dock. We're here at the Breakfast Cabana in Genoa Bay on the dock and I'm with Jeff. How's your day going so far, Jeff? Great, thank you. Um, we're hosting a group from Everett, Washington. Uh, we've just served them, I think, 25 or 30 breakfasts. Uh, they'll be off to Otter Bay, I think, later on today. They're cruising as a group of, I think, about 14 or 16 boats. Real friendly group. We do that quite a bit. Nice, and there's lots of people coming and going. There's dinghies, there's people fishing. It's a friendly place. It is indeed, yeah. Well, I love wooden boats, and I know Tim Doyle does as well, and has quite a background with boats in general. You're a shipwright, Tim. Yes, I was lucky enough to be able to serve a shipwright apprenticeship in the uh, 70s, and uh, actually got to build a, a commercial wooden fish boat. Well, I helped build it. I was just a, a lowly apprentice on the job. But of course, it was uh, a disappearing trade. Wooden boats were being phased out and fiberglass boats were coming on strong. So it wasn't long before I was finding work with fiberglass boats. Now I was a woodworker, but I was working on fiberglass boats doing interior joinery. But of course, during this tumultuous 80s when interest rates went crazy and the uh, boom and bust that we've experienced so many times, uh, you tend to learn to lend a hand to just about anything uh, to, to find work. So I've wired boats, I've plumbed boats, uh, I've laid fiberglass boats up, uh, I've built masts and rigging, um, you name it, I've done it. But the only thing that I haven't done yet is make sails 
and uh, and I mean S A I L S, because I sold boats too. I had my own yacht brokerage for a while. It's uh, the nickname for my little business is anything for a buck marine because that's <laughs> kind of how you need to be in order to survive in the boat business. But my favorite, no question, is building from new. I bet. Well, you've got a beauty here. Tell us about the Grey Lag. A friend of mine, Ron Lindsay, who owned Cubby Marine, uh, a long time in a business in Couch and Bay, heard that I was interested in the idea of starting up a tour boat for, uh, for the tourist industry. And he happened to have this boat in storage uh, at his shop just about a mile away from Couch and Bay. And he invited me to come up and have a look at it. What it was, was just an empty hull, no cabin, no, no, no engine, nothing. Uh, and it was a 1944 ex-Canadian Navy captain's gig. We just started building and I did all the woodworking on Grey Lag and Ron, bless him, a mechanical genius if there ever was one, did all of the mechanical. And what was really great was that we just used all of this material that Ron had collected over decades and decades of being in the business. So, you know, if I needed a steering wheel, he would walk over to the wall and pull one off and say, how's this? He did it with the engine, with the propeller, with everything. He just, you'd walk over somewhere. And what was incredible about Ron was that while he had collected all the stuff, he knew where it all was. Oh, that's fabulous. Anyways, we uh, built the boat from basically the beginning of February and we launched it May 15th. So this is the ultimate in recycling. I think so. Very, very happy that we've had this opportunity on Grey Lag. Now, uh, very shortly, we'll be telling people how they could take a wonderful boat tour around Cowichan Bay or take the shuttle to Genoa Bay. But first of all, we're hitting the streets with Dan Kahn after a short break. On board Grey Lag with uh, Tim Doyle, and he's operating wonderful boat tours in this pristine area around Cowichan Bay. He operates also a shuttle that goes to Genoa Bay. And Tim, you've already met a number of people, even though this is a fairly new service. Uh, people that are local as well as tourists? Yes, the uh, locals have just been great, particularly uh, having the opportunity to go to Genoa Bay to the restaurant here. Uh, without having to make that long, tedious drive. So they come over for lunch or they come over for dinner. But I've also had a lot of uh, tourists. Uh, uh, one of my first customers were a couple of girls that were woofing oh, yeah. uh, at uh, one of the local wineries. And uh, one was from Paris and the other was from Switzerland. What a great opportunity to meet people from other parts of the world. Oh, it's true. And, you know, the further away they come, or the further they come, the more they appreciate just how beautiful it is here. I am sure of that. Uh, sometimes I feel like we, locals, really don't appreciate it. So it's a great opportunity to get out on the water. It's also important that people book ahead for these tours. They happen several times a day. You'll be going through to the end of September. So what number should people call? Well, the, the number, it's only one number. It's my cell phone. It's 250-812-7543. I've just inaugurated a new schedule, so I depart Couch and Bay at 9 and 11 in the morning, and then 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 at night. Now admittedly, the 7 and 9 will depend upon demand, but the other ones, I'm trying to be as much uh, true to that schedule as I can be. I try and maintain some flexibility. Sometimes people have tight schedules and I have to shape my schedule a little around what their needs are. And so that's the shuttle schedule, about every two hours, beginning at nine in the morning. And then in between that, because the run across is only 20 minutes, I can do a round trip in an hour. So that leaves me another hour before the next shuttle run. And that's when I try and fit in my tours around the bay. And we hope that you'll remember this because these stories are gems in the Cowichan Valley. Tim and Greylag Tours, uh, we travel around, we see people in various businesses, we talk to people in all areas and walks of life. So if you have a story about Cowichan Bay, please be sure and let us know. You can reach us on Facebook, you can tweet us, uh, you can also email us or just stop us on the dock if you think you have something to say. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. 
Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network, Men's Wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co., Menswear and Accessories, Hair Services provided by Salon J.